For the next 24 hours, I'm gonna be fishing to try to catch 24 different species. We're going everywhere from ponds to rivers, lakes, spillways, and we're gonna be bringing in a ton of different fish. Now to start off the adventure, I'm heading to a backwoods pond. This pond's got a lot of trees in the water, which is perfect cover for largemouth bass and bluegill, which I'm gonna be targeting here. I started off with a little pink rooster tail, and it didn't take long to catch our first species. There's one, I think it's a bluegill which is still okay, let's go. Oh. After tossing back our first species, it didn't take long to catch our second species, which was a largemouth bass. One of the most common predator fish in all of America. This is largemouth bass, and that is species number two. Keeping time in mind, we're loading up, we're heading out to a new location. Now that I've got my first two species with largemouth bass and bluegill, I'm heading out with my buddies Tate and James, and they're taking me down to their secret minner hole, where we should be able to get on multiple different species of minners by the use of both minner traps and even a seine net. All right, guys, we're out here. Y'all ready to do some business? Y'all ready, ready to it. get it done? We're gonna be doing a little bit of seine netting. Mm -hmm. Down here in this creek, there's a lot of different species and we really don't know which ones we're gonna catch. So here we go. All right, we're pulling up this minnow trap right here. We'll get them up here on this bigger rock, I guess. Okay. Third species of the challenge. Y'all can count it if you want to or not, but nevertheless, a crawdad right there. Not bad, not bad. People call it a crawfish. I mean, I, it looks like a fish. Well, yeah. it's good enough, it counts. I made the rules. Next up is species number four. Check it out. This is actually a sucker. Now we know this is a sucker because uh, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, that. Oh my gosh! What? We got a crazy one, but we'll get to that oh, in a second. Don't even look. Oh, okay. yeah, I don't... Now this one right here is actually a creek chub. With these, they kind of have like a little purple tint to them. And on their mouth, which is how I really tell them apart, it's more forward facing, more like a normal fish rather than bottom feeding kind. So that right there, that's our fifth species. What I'm about to pull out, dude, I'll be honest, I don't know if you've caught one of these or not. Okay. Look at that. Have oh, you caught one of those? Is that? is that a rainbow darter? Is it? I don't know. It ain't rainbow. Don't look like a darter. Have you caught one of those? I don't think I've ever caught one of those. I'm gonna go with that's a rainbow darter. That's number six. All right, the next trap, same type of trap. Oh, wow. Wow, that's a that's big a, one. That's green that's pumpkin. Good. I think we might have a new one. I think really? we do have a new one in here. Let's yeah, go. this one looks a little different. Yeah, it is. It's one of the, it's a yellow one. Oh, yeah. This one also has multiple horizontal uh, black lines, even some black on the face, but more importantly, yellow fins. All right, now we're going to be saning. Now, what this is, is kind of like a, like a big net, and you just walk through a stream and then net everything. See him? Do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we're getting them. We're just bringing the net on. Are we ready? Yeah. Coming up? Yeah. See what we got? Oh, oh snap! Okay. I think we do got something okay, different. Hold it right there. We definitely got something Let's new. Let's go. What are these? Oh, oh. They're vibrant. It looks like some kind of saltwater fish or something, don't it? It does. Look at that, though. It's got very large eyes. It's got kind of like a sharper face, much more reflective. After reviewing this species, we've determined it is a brook. Silver side. After raising her species total to eight in only three hours, we headed on down to the spillway. If you don't know what a spillway is, it's at a lake on the other side of the dam where there's only a small stream of water flowing out. And they actually stock this stream pretty regularly with multiple species of trout. So if we're lucky, we might be able to pull out a rainbow trout and maybe even a brook trout. This place is to go right here. Uh-huh. And it's like cast toward that big monstrosity of whatever that is. <laughs> I've never been here before. I've never been to any spillway. Oh, look at that, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. We're gonna crawl down this rock, cast right over through here. Hopefully, pull something out of it. Oh, geez, yeah, that's good bait. Just gonna throw it out and reel it back. With a rooster tail, as long as it's moving, these things catch a lot of fish. After fishing the spillway for about 20 minutes with no bites, we decided to head on down the creek to some bigger pools of water and see if maybe we couldn't pull a trout out of there. But as we was walking down the creek, we actually stumbled upon species number nine. It's dead, but it's still intact. Now, can you tell me what that is? I think that's an alewife. Alewife? I believe. Kind of like a bait, it, shaddy bait fish kind of? Some kind of bait fish, yeah, it's like a shad. We're counting it. Unfortunately, luck was just not on our side at the creek. We didn't get a single bite from the trout, but at least we did come up with an alewife. But now it's time to move on, and now we're going to the lake. 
both Tay and James are certified crappie masters. And on this lake, they're pretty confident they can get me on both a white and a black crappie. And the rig we're using is super simple. A couple split shots because we're fishing deeper water on down to a hook with a minner just hooked through the lips. Our strategy is just to get over these brush piles and throw it in and to hover our minner just a few inches above the crappie's face. Should get one pretty quick. Nope, oh, there's one. Hooked up with a crappie. Man, I washed it up. No, of oh, course we'd get a bass, but bass it's a large go. mouth. That's, I mean, that's good. That's not bad, but it's not gonna help us in the species challenge. There he is. What's it gonna be? It's a crappie. Yes. Now, what kind is it? Let's find out. All right, James is actually a crappie master, so we're gonna give him this crappie and let him tell us what makes this a white crappie. So the stripes on the side, you can see these vertical bars. That's a very easy way to tell. And also on the top here, they have these uh, vertical, the dorsal fin spines. You can count these things to see what type of crappie it is. So we're looking for five or six to see if it's a white crappie. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is a white crappie right here. A small one, but a white crappie nonetheless. Species number 10. Let's toss them back in there. There he goes. Oh, there's one. Uh oh, there Something. Is. What is it? What's it gonna be? We'll have to find out right here in a second. That is a, hold up, all right. Is that a green sunfish? That looks like a green sunfish right there. After further review, we have identified this fish not as a green sunfish, but actually as a hybrid between a green sunfish and a bluegill, which is often known as a green gill sunfish. Yeah, we'll let him go. Sweet. Just a bunch of trying to fish Mm-hmm. There you go. Crappie. And it's, uh, it's a black crappie. Black crappie. Let's go. There we go. Let's think and go. Heck yeah. So if it's a black crappie, we're, we're looking for seven or eight. So let's count them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven on the last one. So that is a black crappie right there for sure. Here you go, sir. There's your catch. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wee. There we go. Awesome. Pretty good. Dude, that's not one over here. And I thought that he was. Oh, that's. Oh, what is it? Is that one of them? That that's. Is that that's a, something. That's a. That's that looks something like a different. Reddit. We just caught this fish right here. This is a really cool thing. It looks like a bluegill, but it's not. And here's why. It's actually a red ear sunfish. Most people call them shellcracker, though, right? Ain't that another name for them? Yeah, that's what I call them. We're just gonna toss this guy back, and uh, yeah. After splitting up from Tate and James, I went and got some lunch, and now I'm back out here at four o'clock. It's time to fish the river. Looks like a big channel, which is actually perfect for this challenge. Oh, that was kind of risky with the rod. Risky on the rod, could have snapped my rod tip, but we're fine, we made it. And right here, what we have is a really nice channel catfish. Check it out, a really nice channel catfish. Let's go toss him back. And that right there is species number 14. Now to catch these catfish, I actually do it really simple. I got like this drop shot thing I showed y'all earlier. What I wanna do is get my bait right in the eddy line, right where the water's moving and the water's not moving. I want my bait right there. One. This is a whole different species. This one's, a, this one's a flathead. Look at this guy. Now he's straight out the bat. You can tell this is a different species. He's literally the color of mud. And since this is a flathead catfish, it's got that really nice flathead, wide open mouth. This one ain't big, but these guys do get big. They'll actually get like massive. Now it's five o'clock and it's time to jump in the boat and we're actually going out in the river. All right guys, so since we're in the river, we have a couple different species I'm really after, and that's gonna be spotted bass and smallmouth bass if we're lucky. My favorite lure to use is this right here. It's a whopper plopper. This one's in black. Since we're in the river, it's got all kinds of these stumps and trees in the water. I'm just gonna toss it up, parallel it, bring it by the stumps. If we get lucky, we'll catch some fish. Oh, 
Oh, there's one, there's one. Got him, got him. Perfect. Oh, oh, he's under the boat. He's under the boat. He's under the boat. I'm stopping the boat. Pulling him up. Dude, no stinking way. Dude, this is a good spotted bass. I know that, uh, you know, you may be waiting for like a 10 pound bass. You ain't getting it in this river, but this is a beautiful, and I don't say that often, spotted bass. Check him out. That there is species 16. I've got most of my easy species so far. So 16 species. How many is that left? Eight. Abram, I don't know, man. I, I know there's a chance we can get it, but we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to work hard if we're gonna get 24 species. Cause we've only got like three more hours until nightfall. I've only got one more species in this river. And if we can catch it quick, we're gonna bounce and go somewhere else. But maybe the 24 species was the friends we made along the way. Yeah, definitely not. We're going for the fish. Now that I'm targeting a smallmouth bass, I'm actually completely forgetting all about the wood, stumps, and trees and shifting my focus almost solely to rocks and riprap. For some reason, smallmouth just really like to relate around rocks and stuff. So if I'm gonna catch a smallmouth, this is where I need to be spending my time, right over here next to these rocks. Oh, there's one. Oh, this might be a smallmouth right on the rocks, man. Oh, I think it is. I think it literally is a smallmouth. It is. Oh my gosh. And it's huge. Oh, and it came off in the boat. It came off in the boat. Dude, what about that? Come out to the river, catch two fish, and target two species. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the dirt off of him. Accidentally lets him go. Once again, small mouth, whenever I close his mouth, you can see it don't come past his eye. And then straight up, pretty much for a small mouth, the color of it's a lot. Just that really nice bronze. That right there is species number 17. Hey, we're actually making some ground. Goodbye, small mouth bass. These guys are known to be real good fighters, so. There we go, let's pack up the boat. Let's get on the road. Dab. Savage. After pulling the boat out of the river, I headed to a backwoods creek, which just happened to have a little bridge across it, which gives me easy access to fish it. All right, guys, at this spot right here, I can't guarantee anything except it's about to get dark. It's a little creek. I've caught a lot of weird fish out here, but I'm just using the tiniest grub I possibly can on a little spinning rod, and uh, we're just going to dunk it in this creek and hope that something crazy bites it now. Only one way to find out, but I've seen some weird stuff in this creek before. God, oh, almost had one. Got a bite of something. There he is, what is it, what is it, what is it? Get it up here, get it up here. This is a big creek chub. We've done got this species, but I'll tell you, this is definitely bigger than the last one. Toss him back, let's go to the other side. Oh, we got another fish right there. A fish right there. Can this be number 18? And it is. This is fish 18. I knew these guys were in here. This is actually a green sunfish. You can look at it. Got a big mouth, blue on there, and highlighter tips on its fins. This is a green sunfish. That's species number 18. For our final location, we had to go somewhere that had a chance at a lot of species. So I picked out this little creek, which just happens to be bigger than my river. But I like this spot because it's going to give me the perfect opportunity to try out my new kayak. It's a feel-free 12.5. It's got a pedal drive, seems to be a pretty comfy seat, and even a steering thing in the back. But let's get to fishing. Oh my gosh. All right, well, I guess we're in here now. Now I gotta figure out how to get this GoPro. I'm gonna die right here. I'm literally gonna die. Now for this little creek, or I guess it's a big creek. Lure of choice, wide jig head, blue, black, green body. Should be pretty OP. Let's see how we did. <laughs> for about 30 minutes with a little grub just wasn't having any luck so i switched over to some live bait which are some red worms and after that things started going pretty good oh there we go got our first fish is it something we have not caught before it is unfortunately not this is just a standard little bluegill however there's one thing about this creek it does in fact have a lot of different species so i'm just gonna keep running around with a bobber see if we can't get one we've not caught before Let's think and go. We just got a new species. Let's think and go. Was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. 
I don't know what it is, but I know I've not caught it yet. Look at this guy, super colorful, pretty big mouth on him. I don't know what he is right now. I can't identify him right now. That right there is species number 20, actually. And we only need four more species to go. Update, guys. We are currently Oscar Mike on the move. Just got a tip up from a local on the walking track. He said, hey. Hey, man. I heard they said big as up there. I said, I'm on it. Where are they at? Uh, up there. <laughs> Say less. We are on the move to destination. Upper. And that's when I made the executive decision to use the last hour of the day to catch the most elusive fish of the challenge, which is going to be a musky lunch, aka musky. These fish are big, have big toothy mouths, and the baits people use for musky is bigger than most of the fish I caught in this challenge. Needless to say, this is the coolest fish we've went after this entire challenge. But before we throw our first cast, let's take a look back at all the 20 fish we have caught already. We started off early where we pulled in a bluegill and a largemouth bass. Then we transitioned over to men are trapping the creek. We caught a crawdaddy, a creek chub, a sucker, a little thin shiny fish I don't know what is, a southern something, and then this super rare blue slash rainbow darter. As we went to the spillway, we tried to get on some trout, but just wasn't able to. So midday at the lake, we got lucky and caught both a white crappie and a black crappie. And before we left, I even hooked up with a green gill. And we also got that really nice red ear. Then to hit up the river, not only did we catch a channel catfish, but also a flathead catfish which was insane. And once we put the boat in the river, we caught a really nice spotted bass and even caught a smallmouth. And we ended off the day in a tiny creek where we got a green sunfish. And that brings us to the creek we're in right now, where I somehow skipped over number 19. Just, I don't know, just totally forgot about it. And moved on to number 20, which was the unidentified potential pumpkin seed. And that brings us on to number 21. We're going after some muskie. Oh, 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 no! Dang it! Oh! Oh, no! He was a muskie, baby. He was a muskie. Oh, no! No, I just had another one! I can't believe that. get no closer than that. No! I don't think I can get any closer than that. I'm marking on the list. Number 21. Here's a picture of what they usually look like. That's what a picture of one that gets off the hook looks like. And uh, yeah, I'm counting it. We caught a muskie kinda almost. 